Flutter CTO Survey Interviews, powered by LeanCode. Let's build great apps together. Hi, and welcome. Uh, hi, Ander. It's great having you here. Uh, we are meeting during Google I.O., a great event uh, with a bunch of keynotes uh, telling us what the future of technology and specifically AI and Flutter um, can, uh, will be. Uh, so today uh, we're going to discuss uh, the uh, Flutter but also some specifics like package ecosystem. So uh, to start with, can I ask you what uh, role uh, does package ecosystem plays in the Flutter framework and its development? Sure. Uh, so I'm, uh, thanks Lucas, it's been a great event so far, great having you all here as well. So I'm a product manager uh, for Flutter developer experience and tooling as well as a package ecosystem. Um, so the package ecosystem is important of course because as, as uh, we have the core parts of the framework uh, that are built uh, as well as things like the engine and the, the language and such. but how that ecosystem will scale and provide everything you need to build for any given use case is through the package ecosystem. Uh, and the spirit of it is that becomes where uh, all the things outside of the core parts of the framework and language and engine uh, should, should live. Uh, and those should provide everything you need to build. So that's the main, the gist of why the package ecosystem is important. Right, and uh, as you've mentioned, like there is a variety of packages, variety of tools that are there in, uh, to help Flutter developers shift new great apps. Mm -hmm. um, the whole ecosystem is built uh, like by community, right? So there are like contributors. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Flutter is special in that terms, right? Can't tell us why. Yeah, correct. So, you know, F Flutter uh, in every sense from the language, the framework, the ecosystem is all open source as you're well aware. So in the true sense of it, uh, anybody can and should contribute to the ecosystem uh, for whatever use cases are needed to fill out uh, you know, things you might want to build. So in that case, you know, uh, anybody can build a package and build and pack and publish a package. Uh, anybody can contribute to other packages as well. That's another important aspect of it. Uh, and we try to set things up such that, uh, and something I think about and as well as the team and I try and work with people in the ecosystem is how do you make it uh, easier, more seamless for people to collaborate as well, right? Because it's not necessarily about uh, everybody building their own packages. Uh, how can we collaborate on building out different packages, whether that be across platforms, whether that be features, uh, you name it. So that's, that's an important part of the ecosystem. Right, and uh, uh, you as a member of the Flutter team and the Flutter team as such are definitely contributing a lot to Flutter, yeah. uh, but you're also uh, doing a lot in terms of encouraging others uh, uh, to contribute, right? Mm -hmm. Can you also tell us a little bit about, about that? Yes, correct. So, you know, as I said, you know, we, we encourage and we try and facilitate part of what I think of is, I think of the, the package ecosystem that's two main uh, sides to it, right? There is uh, there's the package consumer side. So as a developer who is building and has goals to build a certain app with certain uh, features and to serve a certain customer goal, uh, need to be able to discover packages, need to be able to see what's high quality, to see how it needs to be uh, well documented to see how you integrate it into your app, well supported such that uh, issues are fixed on time, such that uh, they, they, uh, there's uh, features, feature requests can ideally be fulfilled at some point. So that's sort of the package user and consumer side. And the other side, of course, is equally important, which is the package authors and package creators, uh, whether they're doing that for just Dart or for Flutter plugins, uh, is how do we make sure that there is the right uh, tools and documentation and infrastructure to facilitate somebody building that, uh, that, that package, uh, being able to document that package, publish that package, uh, and be able to uh, socialize it and have people use the package. So um, those are the two important parts. And so I think at that intersection of uh, how do we, what do we need to do and what sort of dialogues do we need to facilitate for package authors especially to know uh, the best practices to know the sets of tooling and features that are 
sometimes not obvious that maybe as you know core teams say who are working on the language or specific tooling may know about but how do we make it widely known how do we get feedback and see what should we build what are the needs of package authors then another important element is how do authors uh, collaborate right and how do you, uh, people get support for say a package and getting help with building out the package and maintaining it what are best practices and sharing knowledge across so uh, an example of this that uh, we uh, did started last year and uh, looking forward to more uh, variants of this we started a package ecosystem summit and the idea behind that was to bring together a forum of people who are authors of packages to be able to have these discussions around topics that are important that often we don't get a chance to, right? Uh, and planning to do more of those. We did a virtual one in uh, August 2023 and planning to do more. So look out, for the, look out for the news on that. Right, great. So those are like great initiatives you are uh, creating for all those uh, uh, contributors. Um, and uh, one of the reasons I believe for that is the fact that uh, there is also a limited bandwidth of what you can do as a Flutter team in terms of what's also necessary for the Flutter framework to develop Fever. Um, we obviously see a lot of progress always that are, that is made and really and new releases. Uh, but um, from your experience, how can you tell like what's uh, the uh, the proper way of thinking? Like uh, what sh what kind of frictions or problems should be addressed by the by the Flutter team? Uh, yourself, right? And uh, uh, what could be done by uh, other contributors? Yeah, sure. So, you know, us as, uh, as a member of the Flutter team at Google, we are also a contributor to the whole ecosystem, right? So, uh, so we kind of look at all the things that we believe are important, uh, and there's a lot that are important for us to continue developing, evolving building um, but like any team we need to uh, decide what's the most prioritize see what's the most important and rally around some sometimes pretty large initiatives uh, and 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 kind of follow them through to conclusion and part of that is why we even uh, publish we once we make those sort of that when we to do that planning we do publish our roadmap um, it is available so that the broader set of contributing community as we are can see what we what we've uh, thought is important and what we'll, 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 we'll decide to prioritize and do. And sometimes what we need to not do because we want to make sure there's enough prioritization uh, given the team for the team to be able to focus, right? Um, and what we, what we would hope for the, that helps the ecosystem do is see, oh, where are other areas that may need some investment? And anybody is, uh, and this has happened before where people do fill out pieces of that or decide that there are parts of the ecosystem that need to be addressed. Um, you know, an example of that is uh, Canonical. We have done a lot of work in the Linux space as one kind of big example of that. Not package ecosystem specific, but as that's the spirit of it. So, um, and there, there, we, we see people building out new packages to fill out those, those use cases as well. And we support in terms of infrastructure and such. Okay, so uh, being here at Google I.O., we were able to witness uh, yesterday during the main keynote um, that AI was mentioned 121 times, yes. uh, also calculated by AI. Um, 122, so, uh, if you count the last time. Uh, oh, right, even, even, even that, right. So um, if you can tell, like, uh, from your perspective, uh, how would AI uh, change uh, the way we um, build um, apps, whether mobile apps, web apps with Flutter? Days. Yeah, um, yeah. Ex area I'm excited about as well. Uh, and concrete things, uh, to your point, there are two sides to that that I think about, and they happen to both be areas I, I and the team work on. So the first part of that that's related to the package ecosystem is uh, we think about is how do we enable developers to build with all the emerging AI uh, um, sort of solutions coming out. Uh, so concrete ones are, for example, the, uh, the Gemini API. Uh, how do developers actually concretely build use cases without becoming AI experts, which is not the point. Um, so a concrete examples of that, we launched, uh, along with our last stable release in February, I believe it was, we launched the Google AI Dart SDK. Um, and 
just with this IO, yesterday we launched the Vertex AI for Firebase and Dart SDK. Both of those are, you know, uh, packages in our package ecosystem, as well as supporting documentation, as well as in uh, Google AI Studio and Vertex AI Studio, you can go in and create your prompts and your use case and such, and then uh, develop, use those, those SDKs and the, the plug-in specifically, the dot uh, packages, to uh, wire that into your app, all in Dart. Right, so that's that's a we're shooting for great developer experience there. Those are uh, examples of some. There are a number of other AI products uh, across Google that we are uh, again working towards making available to any Flutter and Dot developer. And the idea there again is that these are no, uh, more s tools in your your tech stack, right, that you can use for various use cases. Whether that be, for example, chat based applications where it makes sense to use a Gemini API or on-device type use cases like uh, uh, if you're doing text summarization or language translation, those are use cases, for example, that can happen on device and there are solutions on that that we're working on making available. The uh, other piece of it is how is AI going to change the developer experience? Right. Uh, so that's, you know, uh, and developer's and role in general, right? And developer's because role it's also in uh, the thing that is uh, um, very, uh, mm -hmm. perhaps still um, in the future, like. Uh, uh, however, it's uh, very interesting, right, to see uh, how this developer's role is going to look like in Correct. the future. Yeah, I, it's really interesting times, and I think of it, uh, there are two directions to that. There's what we currently think of and call a developer and how it'll impact uh, or how that'll evolve that role. Um, so, you know, things that are happening concretely in that space, of course, are different development developer assistance products uh, that are in your development environment that help you with different pieces of your development, such as, you know, code generation, explanation, uh, and even right up to like testing, uh, et cetera. So that's one piece of it, that's the traditional developer and what the role will be over time. And you know, all of this is taking shape as we go along. There's some things that have become relatively well established, uh, but what are new things that we can really help sort of move the needle on helping with productivity, taking away the quote unquote boring work of development and you know, have more the more creative side of things be what you spend most of your time on. So that's one thing I think of, but there's also a, a higher order thing of like, who do we enable to become a developer, right? Where you, we bring down the barrier of what it takes to become a developer is also an important element of that and what that means, right? So as somebody who is able to uh, describe in enough detail uh, that it can be put in our prompt to develop a feature, is that a new type of developer? We will see. To be determined. So yes. it's an exciting time to then be part of that uh, sort of uh, evolution uh, of what's happening. So we 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 we're constantly talking one to our users as well, uh, well users of the Flutter framework of the of the language to our partner teams across Google that we partner with and in the ecosystem as well. People are building interesting tools that facilitate all these things, and we talk to all these people to see how we co-develop what that future developer will look like. Right. Yeah, so the future is definitely there with AI. It's just a matter of uh, what, uh, how the AI is going to shape it, right? Correct. Uh, yes, and... Well, I would say how we should shape what AI unlocks. Unlocks, yes. right, right, even from that perspective. Thank you very much, Ander. It thank was you, a pleasure uh, having you here. Uh, thank you also for uh, inviting us uh, to Google I.O. and giving us a chance to mm -hmm. be here and to participate. Uh, it's also a great and exciting time, so it was my pleasure. Pleasure thank is mine, you. Lucas. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. All right. Right. Thank you. Build your next project with us. Schedule a free 30 minutes consultation.